But look, in, in John 17, when, when Jesus was praying to the Father, this is also a very strong word for right now, for today. Because Jesus was not afraid of the world. Right? He clearly was fearless and you know, set his face like flint to go be executed. So he's not some wimpy Jesus. And we're not supposed to be wimpy Christians either. It takes a lot of courage to really speak the truth in love. And he, Jesus is speaking to the Father now, and he says, I've given them your word. He's talking about us, right? Did you know that he was talking about you all these thousands of years ago? He's talking about us. I've given them your word, and the world has? That's a strong word, isn't it? Why? Why does the world hate us? Well, read Psalm 2. That's where the, that's where the clues are. Why do the heathen rage? And the people plot a vain thing against the Lord and against his anointed one, saying, basically, get off my back. Stop telling me how I'm supposed to live. I want to do whatever I want to do. And we're like, yeah, you can, but man, you will prosper if you learn how to live within the boundaries that God sets for you because his ways are way high above our ways. So I'm not telling you because it's going to be a bad thing. Your life is going to dramatically improve. Would anybody here witness to that, that after you got saved, major problems in your life were solved just by getting saved? Huh. So look, they hate us, but that's because we're not of the world. Jesus is saying, just as I'm not of this world, I don't pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. There's that word that I used earlier today, sanctify, right? We can be sanctified by the truth of the word of God, made holy as we live in an unholy culture. And I'm, look, I don't talk a lot about, uh, let's just call it critical race theory or some of the other things that are going to start to be popping up, but I know a lot about those things. So I, I've always said, just type in info at King of Kings wc.com. I could send you links to videos if you're trying to understand what's going on. But there's a real attack against the moral fiber of our country. And it's very insidious because there's all new definitions. There's all different words that you think you know what they mean by that word, and that's not what they mean by that word. It's a, it's a complicated thing. You would wonder why would I know all about that is because I have a son that's on a college campus right now. But he graduated, then went to work for eight years, and then went back to get his PhD is what he's trying to get. And he walked back on the campus and it was like, oh my God, it was only eight years ago. What the heck happened? Because the freshmen that he was meeting were in a whole different mindset that he was used to. And it wasn't a good one. So he would send me links because he was looking for advice. Like, I don't know how to navigate these waters. I'm not going into detail now. I'm just saying I could try to help you understand how insidious the attack is. I just don't think we need to do it from here in the pulpit on a Sunday. You talk to me and I'll, I'll get you the information you need. But the, the big thing here is sanctify them by your truth. As they're walking out in the very defiling atmosphere of the world, you sanctify them to be holy people. Not because you pulled them out, but because you allowed them to be in there to be a light in the midst of the darkness. That takes courage. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Are you them? A little louder, please. Yeah, you're them. We're them. We're sent out into the world. Why? Because the light belongs in the darkness. So look at church history. As things have gotten bad, the church shines brighter. Because the darker it gets in the culture, the brighter that we shine. Nothing we have to be afraid of. All right, so John chapter 20, heading down the home stretch. You all know the scene because, you know, we study it at Easter, or, you know, Resurrection Sunday, Passover season. When Jesus is resurrected, he comes into the room where the disciples are hiding in fear, remember? And he didn't have the key to the door, so he just came in the room through the wall, however he did it. And, and he saw them in fear, so he said, peace be with you, right? Because it would be a little, that would shake you up if you saw that. And then when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And again, he said to them, peace, be, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, come on, a little louder, please. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. So look, the marching orders are clearly here. However, we got confused into thinking that the Bible is not uh, pertinent to our day-to-day -day living. Let's just break that lie off right now, okay? We, we have to have a voice in the culture, or else we're going to see just wicked things going on, being called legal, because we've drifted too far away from the base of the word, amen? 
All right, so I just want to finish up in a, in a pretty well-known portion of Scripture, especially if you're part of this church. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. That's a, that's a cornerstone Scripture in one of the teachings in the Possessing Your Vessel class that we run. And it's called Bitter Root Judgments, that particular subject. And this is the text verse for it. Pursue peace with all people. Only those in your political party? No. Oh, all people? all people? Even the ones that you find make you ill? Look, we can agree to disagree on things, but we, we cannot show contempt for God's creation. Amen. And every person is God's creation, so you never get to show contempt. You could say we disagree. This conversation isn't going anywhere productive, so let's give it a break. I don't care how you do it, but if you represent Christ, he didn't shame people. You know I mean? On occasion, you could see the people he got the most upset with were the Pharisees, were the ones that were supposed to be representing the Father to the people. So P... Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Ooh, big one right there, right? So if you don't do that, you'll fall, fall short of the grace of God. Just as God extended grace to you, you're supposed to extend grace to other people. That doesn't mean you ignore the facts. You speak the truth to them in love. You pray and you ask the Lord, I have no idea how I'm going to crack the code of this person because they seem so confused. Here it is. Don't fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by this many are defiled, become defiled. Do you think this is for today? Are there, are there bitter roots springing up in people? Oh, my God. It's the worst I've ever seen uh, on a cultural basis. People are just getting hijacked emotionally. That bitter root that springs up in a Christian defiles many people because we're getting demoted from our place. As the Father sent me, Jesus said, so I'm sending you. The prince of the, of the earth is coming. The prince of this world is coming. But he has nothing in me, Jesus said. Remember? What about me? What about you? Does the enemy have something in me? Well, if we let this root of bitterness spring up in there, yes. Will we be as effective? No. Was Jesus always effective? Yes. So we live in the hiding place of your glory. 